Hi everybody, my name is Anne. Thanks for joining me today in my home studio here in Parker, Colorado. I have what I think is gonna be a lot of fun today. I thought we could review the Albrecht Durer watercolor pencils. I use these really pretty regularly to sketch in watercolor, but I haven't used them for an entire piece yet. So I thought we could try it and we're gonna do something fun. I thought we could try and create Darth Vader. Are you ready? Let's go to the dark side. I've had these for quite a while. Um, I use them, like I said, just to do my watercolor sketch a lot of times, especially when I'm in plein air. These I really like, and I'm starting to use them more in my watercolor in general, but um, they are artist quality, made in Germany. As you know, Faber-Castell is a really well-renowned company. So when you purchase them, I just have the set of 12. You could get bigger sets, but I have the set of 12. Here's what comes in the set. Unsurpassed in light fastness, very soft, vibrant color lay down, 100% agree with both of these, and fully water soluble, which means you're not gonna get those, uh, those extra lines. So they have different, uh, different quantities in the sets that you can get, very, very versatile. So, okay, first of all, it has a little bit of the company history in here. They have 120 colors in all with optimal light resistance that can be applied completely through painting for a unique color intensity. And that's true that you can, there's a lot of different techniques you can do with these and we'll get into those as well before we tackle uh, Luke's father. I am your father. Wow. Okay, so these leads are 3.8 millimeter. They're pretty standard, um, what you would expect from a colored pencil. So when you pick it up here, you see this uh, little silver paintbrush on there, and that's your way to know that it is water-soluble. Made in Germany, Albrecht Dürer, uh, the little Faber-Castell logo and their name, and the color of the pencil indicates the color of the ink that you're going to get. Um, it also says on the back what color it is, emerald green, color number 183, and there it is in German, I assume and three stars. So let me just go through real quick and let's just see with this set that I have. As I'm going through these here and checking out the light fastness, most of them have three stars. There are a couple that have two and it's kind of what you would expect to find um, with the reds, etc. There is a set of six. So I don't have the smallest set. If you wanted to just dabble in these, you could get a set of six and then you would get in those uh, cadmium orange, a deep scarlet red, a light green, a light yellow, a magenta, and a phthalo blue. So there are ways to get into this without even spending um, the money on the set of 12. They run from $2.57 US individually to $300, $299.99. And I'm looking at the Blick set, uh, I'm, excuse me, the Blick uh, website here. They, they come in sets of 6, 12, 24, 36 and that 36 set it also comes in a gift box separate packaging and a set of 60 and 120 and the 120 set also comes in a wooden box in case you wanted to really give someone a nice gift even if that someone just might be yourself <laughs> these leads are housed in uh, premium california cedar wood and they do have an sv secure all bonding to strengthen the lead and help prevent breakage however as you'll see, um, the, the light ultramarine uh, broke of mine, and I think it's broken all throughout the lead, um, and the yellow, I had trouble sharpening that one too. But as I'm swatching these out, and I'm gonna put down some firm pressure here because this is the thing I love the most about these Faber-Castell Arbecter watercolor pencils. When you put down a heavy load of pigment with any kind of pigment stick, the thing that would drive me nuts and drive me away from the product would be that after it's activated with water, I could still see those lines where I laid the pigment down. As we go forward with this test, you'll see that those lines completely disappear on this brand. And I am so thrilled. That's kind of like my benchmark for, is it, is it an enjoyable pigment stick to use? Um, the colors go down very softly. They feel as soft as Prismacolors. They're just beautiful. I, I have no problems with these whatsoever. In fact, I would love to have a full set. Um, as I'm doing this voiceover, you know, I've already finished the painting and it was a pure joy to do. So I'll switch to the, skip to the end rather of the swatching here. And you can see that light ultramarine is really just kind of dwindled down. 
So I do know that I must have dropped it at one point. Um, I've had these for quite a while, so I don't want to pursue returning them or getting an exchange. But I do know that Faber-Castell stands behind their product, and especially if you purchase this from a reputable uh, retailer, you will be able to take care of that. Now, as you can see there on the swatch sheet, I do have everything laid down and the pigment went down absolutely beautifully. So what I like to do, I'm using 100% cotton Strathmore uh, uh, pre-cut watercolor paper, by the way. So what I like to do when I am working with any pigment stick is I like to use a golden tacklon or a nylon filament brush. They hold less water. And I think that when you're dealing with any kind of a pigment stick that you apply down and then activate with water, or even if you're going to, to activate it ahead of time, um, I prefer using the man-made filament because I feel like you can really control the water and the bristles are just a little bit stiffer and they do help to lift that pigment out of the nooks and crannies of the paper. I mean, look at this, you guys. Look at how beautifully that red spreads around. You can get just the most beautiful washes from these. And you know what? I think let's try adding some salt too. I wanted to uh, do all of these swatches with adding some salt because they really do act like watercolors that you are used to. You can do everything with watercolor that you can do with these. You won't have any problem at all. So let me just zoom in here and you can see how beautifully that lifts up the pigment. It's, and I was pressing pretty hard to get it on the paper there and it's just really kind of buried in those nooks and crannies of this cold press watercolor paper and it just blends and lifts so beautifully and the pigment spreads just wonderfully. Um, you can see the salt that I'm using there is some pretty thick salt. It's, uh, I don't know if thick's the right term, the crystals are really large. Uh, you don't have to use this kind of salt, any salt will work. I just found this one, I thought it would be kind of interesting and much to my disappointment, it's not. <laughs> The only thing that's interesting about it is really to look at it. So it's kind of fun, but it is the salt that I keep down in my uh, in my art studio. So that is the one we're going to use today. I'll put a link to that salt if you're interested down in the description. Um, you know, it's it's a little bit different. It's kind of fun to look at. But as far as watercolor techniques, I don't think you're going to get anything new or different out of that salt. But look at this blue. Now, I don't know if any of these granulate. That's the one thing I haven't really been able to establish with these pencils is some granulation. This right here is a light ultramarine so you would think you'd get some granulation but I didn't notice any per se. So let me move ahead to the end of this swatch test and you'll be able to see you know what I, what I think I'm going to do instead is show you how I tested the white because I'm going to do that on a black sheet of paper. I was going to do it here on this one but I decided to go ahead and do it on black. So we'll come back to that pigment test here, but I want to show you what I'm doing in this sketchbook here. This is a Stillman and Burn Nova series uh, sketchbook, and I, I have used wet media on it before, but I think it's probably about the weight of a uh, mixed media paper. It's really nice for sketching in colored pencil. You can use these like colored pencils too, by the way, and then just blend them with water instead of uh, odorless mineral spirits. So here you can see the white. It blends really nicely, but you're not going to get an awful lot of um, opacity from it. We'll go ahead and put some salt on this one too so that uh, we can see, you know, I've never used salt on white pigment on black paper, so that'll be new for me too. And now we'll go back and take a look at these that we've already salted and got them ready to go. You can kind of see that salt already working, but I really don't think that we're going to see a lot of granulation, but let's let that dry completely and then we'll come back to it. I decided to go ahead and sharpen all of these with a real long point so that we can have some fun playing with it. Now this is my white ceramic palette. Um, that's just some dried white gouache in there. We won't be going into that today, but now I'm switching over to uh, a Princeton Snap brush. I want to try a round brush with this technique. And here's one way to use them. You can just apply that wet brush directly to the tip of the pencil and then you can get some beautiful, thick, wonderful watercolor just ready to go. I mean, this it activates so quickly. You just, it's ready to go, and that's what I really like. The portability, I mean, if you can imagine not carrying pans of watercolor and just carrying these pencils, if you were gonna go somewhere to paint, I mean, you would have very little cleanup, and that's what I really, really like about these. Look at this beautiful wash that you can get here. And you can do, like I said, all of the techniques that you would normally do with watercolor, you can do that with these pencils. We'll just drop in some water here and try and force some cauliflower blooms. And already, look at that, you can see that happening. 
Each pencil will have that light fastness rating on it with the, the star system and the three star seems to be the highest on the system that they use. And uh, I will try and find some more research on that before we get to the end of the video here. But right at this moment in my doing the voiceover, I'm not really finding what that equates to. What I am finding though, that this is kind of cool. They, their system, their pencil system, the colors match. So it encompasses all Faber-Castell art and graphic products. So I think that's that probably pretty standard across the board, but when you're dealing with color number 152, for example, that is going to be the same pigment throughout, no matter what Faber-Castell product you're using. So the second test I did there with the magenta was to put some water down, and then uh, you can write in the water for a nice uh, soft effect, and then you can see how different that is from the, the dry lines that I made up there flicking a wet brush across the the stick there the across the tip of the pencil rather will get you those lovely splatters and you can see the paint just mixes in there i got some of the magenta in the red it just mixes beautifully and now what i will show you is yet another technique how you can mix these i've got that <laughs> silly little tip of the yellow pencil because it did break but uh, it's good pigment i'm going to keep using it and I've just got a wet brush and I'm just agitating that little piece of pigment there and I'm going to mix it in with that red. The red is a very cool red, this one that I have. And so I'm gonna mix some of that yellow into it to just kind of warm it up and look at that rich amount of pigment that gets dropped in there. It's just beautiful and I don't have to work for it very hard at all. So look at this blend. Isn't that a beautiful mix? You can mix these colors in a palette. You can mix them on paper. There are so many different techniques that you can do with these and they just will really, I think, open up your creative abilities. Another watercolor technique that I like to use is lifting off and these pigments have no trouble doing that. Of course, that depends on your paper as well, but you can see you can lift that pigment off just as easily as you can put it down. Yet another fun way to work with these, uh, these beautiful aquarelle pencils is to color on some sandpaper. Now you don't have to go to the art supply store and get this little uh, sandpaper sharpener. You can use just regular uh, sandpaper from the hardware store or you can use an emery board that you would get at the drugstore to file your nails with. So I'm just putting some powdered pigment down. I'll use, I've got the blue there and now let's try adding some of the green. Same thing, you just kind of scribble over the sandpaper and then tap it off. And now what I'm going to do is get a little spray bottle and let's just mist this and see what happens to that pigment powder that we put down. And look at that, right away it activates and you just have this dynamic spray. You could use this for an oceanscape, you could use it for wildflowers, you could use it for, uh, gosh, lizard skin, dinosaur skin, anything like that. I just think this is so versatile. Now what I'm doing is I have some wet paper there and I'm just taking a craft knife and swiping it perpendicular across the end of that uh, colored pencil there, the, excuse me, the watercolor pencil so that I can get some of those shavings down into that water. And you'll see, you can just create all kinds of neat effects with this. This would be lovely on black paper if you have some water down and you wanna put some of that ocean spray. Um, I don't know how opaque it would be, but it would be a lovely effect with that with the white. And here, of course, you could use it for wildflowers or more texture in your art. So this is just a lot of fun to keep playing with and just to see everything that you can come up with. Now let's take a look at our salt. I think it's dried pretty much. I went ahead and did more on the right hand side there, but it didn't quite dry when I rubbed the salt off. There's a little bit, you can see a little bit of the salt lifting up there. I was pleased to see that because I've never tried doing that technique on black paper. This isn't watercolor paper per se, but I've never tried that with white on black. Here's a close up of some of the salt now. I've got it all removed from our swatch test here. And you can see we really did get some good lifting. So you have a full range of capabilities here with these, uh, with these watercolor pencils. And I really just don't think there's a way to be disappointed with these. I have one more test here that I'd like to show you. I'm just going to show you what it's like to mix the colors on the paper. So I've got a blue down and I'm gonna take my little, my pitiful little piece of yellow here and uh, color next to it. And I will show you what it's like to create a blend. Now you can put these uh, colors on top of one another, or you can put them next to each other. But let me show you what it's like when we activate this with water. So the first one that I want to uh, put the brush into is going to be the yellow. And you'll see how lush and vibrant, I might have a little bit of blue on that uh, 
paintbrush there, but let's go ahead and mix that up. Well, you can see how lush and vibrant that yellow pigment is, which I really like. A lot of times when you get a watercolor pencil, at least some of the brands that I've tried, the yellow and lighter colors tend to not be quite as vibrant, and that is definitely not the case here. So let's go in now and activate that phthalo blue, and let's see what we can come up with with that one. Here we go. I'm using a different brush just so we can have a clean test. So you can see how lovely and uh, sheer yet vibrant that this pigment is. It's just, it's watercolor. That's all there is to it. It's just so easy to use. And another thing I want you to notice here when I'm doing this swirling is to see that all of those pencil lines that I put down initially have disappeared. You have a thorough and complete mix. Watch this. When I paint it again, you'll see there is no doubt I'll zoom in really close here and you can see that all of that pigment has completely become soluble and mixed. And look at that beautiful wash that we've created. So now that we know the basics of how to use this wonderful tool, let's see if we can create the big guy. My grandson, he's, he's not quite three, but he loves Darth Vader. I drew Darth Vader off camera, so I'm still using the same paper. I'm using that Strathmore 100% cotton, and I have these watercolors at the ready because I have this idea that I'm going to use some Daniel Smith Lunar Black because it granulates really cool, and I was kind of hoping that I could get some dynamic effects in the background. Um, so we'll see. I'm just going to go in here, and I tell you what, I'm a little bit nervous because I've never done this before, and it's for my grandson, so I want it to look nice. So I hope that it will. I'm pretty sure it will. But you know, you never know when you're trying something new. You just never know. Um, I'm finding it very easy to blend and mix the colors as we're going along. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. I think that uh, when I do get to it, the watercolors that I will add, I'm going to use a Daniel Smith Lunar Black, like I said. I have a Winsor Newton Scarlet Lake, oh no, that's Holbein, a Holbein Scarlet Lake that I really like and I think it's just the perfect color to kind of create more of a glow from his lightsaber. And I think I'll also go in with a little bit of uh, Daniel Smith Thalo Blue because the way that the lighting is on the reference that I used, it's kind of subtle, but I can really exaggerate that and kind of uh, monopolize on that good versus evil. Um, although, of course, at this point, Anakin is already fully on the dark side, but at any rate, I really like this pose that he has because he's got that that uh, death grip going from his hand and uh, the lightsaber in the other hand. So I got a funny story to tell you before I speed this up, though. Um, when Star Wars came out, the very first one in the 70s, and I know it's not it's like the third one in the series or whatever, but the first one that was shown in theaters, that's how I'm going to say it. <laughs> Um, it was a big deal, and we had never seen special effects like that. It was just really incredible to think that these people would wear these kinds of costumes. And, I mean, you know, Planet of the Apes was amazing. Star Wars was amazing. These are things that Hollywood just had not done before, and these special effects were phenomenal. So things like lightsabers, um, explosions on film, all of that, we just, we had never seen those before. So it was a big deal to go get your tickets and go stand in line, and we did. We went to a theater that uh, was, gosh, it was like 30 miles away from our house. It was the only one we could get in to see. And I remember it was my brother and I and my parents. We went to the theater. We were sitting down, and the scene where Luke and Luke battles his father. He doesn't know that he's his father yet, I don't think. I don't think. Anyway, it's the scene where they're having their battle with their lightsabers. The film burned in that scene, and everyone in the theater thought it was part of the movie. We all gasped and clapped, and we were just so excited. And then we collectively said, oh, because we realized that it was the film that had burned. So it's interesting to think that uh, back in the day that uh, audiences were just not as uh, savvy as they are now. So sometimes I wonder, you know, when my grandson gets to go to a movie when he is a, a teenager and it's the new big deal, oh my gosh, I mean, what is he going to see? What are we creating in the future? This is This is really kind of exciting, and I am so thrilled that Star Wars is still near and dear to many people's hearts. So let me go ahead and uh, speed this up here and we'll, we'll make it as concise as we can. And I hope you enjoy watching how these uh, pencils blend and work on the paper. I kind of did a mix of 
this initial part here where I've already drawn and just filled in the bare basics and then I went in and did some of that technique where you use the wet brush on the the pencil itself and create just a little pot of paint to add on um, I, I had no trouble doing it and it was a lot of fun so I'm going to speed this up here and I will see you at the end so these are going to be hard to beat I've got another set that I'm going to review here coming up I think I'll do that next week and uh, then we'll have a good back-to-back -back comparison uh, but this brand, the Faber-Castell, is delightful. It is just perfect to work with. And as you can see, what I'm able to do is to focus that bulk of the pigment where I've laid those lines down, and then I can come in with water and spread it around and just do wonderful um, sketchy painting, which is what I love to do. Anywhere where you're concentrating the pigment, of course, you're going to have uh, more color when you draw it when you draw it down but then you can manipulate that a little bit with your brush so as i'm going in here with his uh, his robes you can see it's very easy to create shading and shadows i'm just having no trouble whatsoever i believe the brush that i'm using is still the number six i think i used that throughout this whole painting the number six round um, with the exception of the background i did switch back to that number 10 shader from uh master that's a master stroke by blick it's their golden tackle online these brushes the princeton snap line and the blick master stroke line i have found them to be my absolute favorite for um for man-made fibers i think that they hold up very well they spring back they give you a really good response when you are working with a paintbrush like this and you want to be able to have some of that feedback to know exactly how much pressure you're putting down and what that feels like to push that amount of pigment around, I think it's essential to have a brush that's going to give you the kind of feedback that you need. And the Princeton Snap and the Blick Master Stroke are the two that I really appreciate the most. I realize the one thing I haven't told you guys yet is how much these cost. So on the Faber-Castell website, the set of 12 runs for $36. Now let's take a look at Blick here. I've got these websites up on my computer. Um, I did tell you the individual pencils run from $2.57 to $300 for the whole set of, um, of $100. Now let me go back over here to the listing. The set of six is only $12.92, and that's with that limited colors. Those are sold in the blister pack. But the tin, the first one, again, it retails for about 36, but you can get it on Blick for $27.36. So it's just a really economical way. I really love Faber-Castell for that reason. And I'm, they're not paying me to do this. Neither is Blick, nobody, Princeton, nobody sponsors me. Nobody's paying me for anything, Strathmore, nobody. I'm just doing this all with my own money from my opinion as an artist and an instructor i like to share these opinions with you so that you can be a little bit more informed in your purchasing decision and uh, maybe if this is the kind of art that you do um, of course i'm not very practiced in this uh, comic book style art this graphic design style but i sure do love it and i'm so enamored with it and i think that these pencils really lend kind of a <sighs> how can I say it, kind of just a graphic brilliance to what you're doing. And I think that you can do that because you can get in here and lay the pigment down and then manipulate it on the paper. And I think that you can create in tremendous depth, tremendous bits of shading and light, and you can really do a lot of playing around that maybe with traditional watercolor would not be as easy. This definitely makes things effortless. And I really love that so much. So the different sets that you can get, they've got um, uh, 12, sorry, 6, 12, 24, 36, and I believe there's a 48 and a 60. Yeah, and the 36 also comes in the gift set. Uh, there's no 48. I'm sorry, a 60, a 120, not 100, 120. And that one you can get in a tin case for $174.95. So the one in the wood box is the one that will run you close to 300. So... You know, here's the deal. <laughs> if you're looking for something to just augment where you are currently, or even if you're just starting out on your watercolor journey, I think these would be an incredible addition, especially if you are a comic book artist. Because when you're drawing uh, whatever it is you're going to color, whether it's uh, manga or, um, you know, a, a, I can't think of another comic book, kind of like a Marvel or DC style, or if you're an animator, like something like, uh, if you like drawing Disney, anything like that, 
when you can put that pigment down and then move it across the paper, I just think it lends to a little, a subtle difference in the painting that just makes it a little more graphic. It makes it a little more bold and those lines are very definitely there. They're in your face. And that's kind of that graphic style that uh, goes so well with this type of artwork. So let's skip to the very end and I will show you how this Lunar Black performs. It is a coolest paint. Now first I'm going to go in with this Scarlet Lake and this, like I said, is a Holbein. It is uh, PO73 and PR234 and a little bit PV19. I use this in sunsets. I absolutely adore this pigment. It's perfect for poinsettias at Christmas time. It's so beautiful. And then we get into the Lunar Black, which is, like I said, a Daniel Smith. It is PBK11. This granulates like no other. You can mix it with several different paints, which is why I wanted to use it here because it will blend beautifully with uh, using some wet on wet techniques with this Scarlet Lake and the Thalo Blue when we get in there. And it's going to help those become kind of granulating because of the properties of this PBK11. So let me move ahead a little bit to where we've got some of the blue going and you'll see how these colors mingle and meld and create this neat kind of a smoky background for Darth to emerge from. So in my mind anyway, I think this looks cool, but you know, if it's something that, <laughs> that you're not into, I'm sorry. I just, I'm having a lot of fun with this and I like to share that joy. I don't know, hopefully it'll spark joy in you. I don't know, I just have a lot of fun painting as you probably already know. And um, I really enjoy sharing these experiences with you guys so that you can hopefully have as much fun painting whatever it is that you're gonna paint with these Albrecht Dürer watercolor pencils that, uh, that I did here. Now at the end, I'm going to go back and uh, go in with a white gel pen and kind of get a little bit more going as far as the highlights go, because right now he's pretty dark and a little bit flat. I think he needs a little bit of shine because his costume, that black plastic helmet, does really reflect the light pretty intensely. And I didn't want to go in with a white pencil because as we found on that black paper, it's just not quite opaque enough. So I will do those high highlights at the end with a white gel pen. But as you can see with this, uh, the watercolor, the lunar black, it's just really granulating right away. And I can, I'm able to continue to move that pigment around and uh, keep it going, keep it wet. This paper's really nice. It's the Strathmore uh, pre-cut 100% cotton watercolor paper, like I told you, and um, it's just a lovely little paper. Very affordable, easy to use, and it's a nice size. With the 8x10, you can frame it very easily. You don't have to, um, you know, you can just pick up any old frame. You don't have to do anything special. You don't have to have it professionally framed, or you don't have to cut anything special for it because it's a standard size. So now that we're at the end of this, let me go to the very end, and I will show you the highlights that I did. There's a lot of ways to do these highlights. The way that I'm going to do them today is with this uh, Sakura Jelly Roll uh, 0.08. And uh, it's going on here really easily. I think my pen is almost done. After you use these pens a while on watercolor, they just kind of clog up. So I have to keep uh, wiping it off on a paper towel just to get it to get that ink to keep going there. But I think the highlighting is going really well. And I will show you the final outcome. Well, if you've been thinking about adding watercolor pencils to your art supplies, hopefully this has helped you make a better decision one way or the other. And uh, here you go. Here's my Darth Vader in the Faber-Castell Arbiter watercolor pencils. Oh, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Bye now.